Coming to you live from Ersprung Gymnasium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University in Berea. Welcome inside our coverage of the undefeated Yellow Jackets. It's the BW Yellow Jackets and the Mount Union Purple Raiders in a rematch of last year's Ohio Athletic Conference Championship game, which Mount Union won in alliance, even though Baldwin Wallace took both matchups during the regular season. BW 11-0 on the season. They are unbeaten in conference play with a 4-0 mark, and they are having a tremendous season. Haven't started this strong since the 03-04 campaign, but Mount Union always puts a good women's basketball team on the floor, and it has been a very competitive, lengthy history between these two teams. Tonight's Yellow Jacket women's basketball game is brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products. They're a global recycling company. Also by Domino's Pizza in Berea. Call them at 891-0030 or order online at dominoes.com. And finally, by the Ohio Education Credit Union. Gain the advantage and build your future today. Alongside Jeff Miller, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for making us a part of your night. It's going to be a fun night between two teams that I think are going to put, uh, put together an entertaining game, Jeff. It's a game that features a Mount Union team that is excellent rebounding the basketball, but a Yellow Jackets team that has done very little wrong so far this year. You got that right, Brandon. The Mount Union is probably the leaders in the board game that something that the Yellow Jackets tend to struggle with, their size difference there in the, the post play. And the BW just has been on fire winning 11 straight for the first time, like you said, since the 03-04 season. And they could tie, tie that mark at 12 games in a row tonight, too. And between these two teams, there's always a competition. Last year, like you said, it was two, two games in the regular season for the Jackets, the big one for the Purple Raiders in the championship game. But every year, it's back and forth. So last year, it was two regular season wins. The year before, it was one and one. Then it was 2-0, 1-1. Oh, one one. So it's BW 6 out of the last 9, but you never know. So we'll see who, how that trend's going to continue. Is it going to be one win or is it going to be two? Of the 440 teams that play Division Three women's college basketball, only 17 remain unbeaten, and only four in the Great Lakes region are unbeaten. Thomas Moore, the reigning national champion, Carnegie Mellon, who's having a tremendous season in the UAA, and two OAC foes, the Ohio Northern Polar Bears and Sherry Harris Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets, who for the first time this week are now receiving votes in the D3Hoops.com national poll. Now they, they are only receiving a couple of votes. I think a lot of people are looking at the Yellow Jackets and saying that maybe they haven't played a overly strong strength of schedule yet. But BW knows, hey, look, we schedule these games a couple years ahead of time. All they can do is just play the teams that are on their schedule and try and take care of business one game at a time. And they're coming off of a, a tournament win here at home against two pretty good teams, Loris College in, in the uh, championship game, the most recent one. Yeah, like you never know who or what your team's going to be the next year. And if you schedule this a year and a half to two years in advance, Loris, who is coming in, looked on paper to be having a, a down year for Dewhawks come in here and get into the championship game, but they were a national qualifying team last year. So, and LaRoche, who was in the tournament, didn't make it to the championship game. So you got teams that BW has put on their schedule that have had the track record of being in the NCAA tournament, and that's probably what the coaches are looking at right now, that overall their record right now isn't that fantastic. So the, the Jackets aren't getting the love right now, but keep doing this right now. Tonight's a big test here. The next two against Wilmington and Ohio Northern, who is 15th in the country. You knock off those three in a row, you're going to be back right in the top 25. Mount Union enters the game 7-4, and 2-2 two and two in conference play, though they have played a much more challenging schedule. They've already played Ohio Northern, losing that game by nine points in Ada. And their best non-conference opponent of the season came in game number two, Jeff. They played the... Uh, the number three ranked team in the country in Scranton, who is 12 and 0. They were handled easily in that game, 70 to 36. And the uh, Purple Raiders certainly learned a lot about their young team in that game early in the season. Lots to talk about as we continue to preview this matchup, but rather than having us tell you about it, we'll take a quick time out and hear from head coach Sherry Herrer as she shares her thoughts specific to this one here tonight. It's the Purple Raiders and the Yellow Jackets coming up shortly on BWYellowJackets.com.
Baldwin Wallace basketball resumes conference play tonight as the Yellow Jackets and the undefeated Yellow Jackets uh, have a, a fun game ahead of them tonight with the Mount Union Purple Raiders in a rematch of last year's conference championship game. And as always, we're joined pregame by head coach Sherry Herrer. Sherry, I know this is a game that you know you don't really like to circle games on the calendar before the season starts, but knowing that you you bested Mount Union twice in the regular season and you know, really good, hard-fought games and fell short in the conference title game. I know this is one that you want to have early on. Yeah, our, our kids get pretty pumped up to pay, play Mount Union normally. I hope it's still the case because um, there's always been a pretty big rivalry there regardless of what happened last year. This is one of those games when you look on paper, and it's only looking on paper, but you see two teams that shoot it pretty well from beyond the arc and, and maybe the one edge that Mount Union might have on the glass. They seem to be a really good rebounding team. How much has that been a point of emphasis getting ready for tonight? It's been a huge point of emphasis. Um, yeah, and rebounding is not our strength, and that's one of our big concerns, and we talk about it a lot. Tonight we can't talk about it. We've got to go out and do it. You've got a chance to play them on your home floor. First time this year that, uh, that you're going to play them, and it happens to be in your own building where you've had some success recently coming off of a very successful holiday invitational. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts since we didn't have a chance to, to wrap too much up on, on that particular tournament. First time you've hosted a tournament after Christmas time, and, and it really couldn't have gone much better. Yeah, it was a great atmosphere with the men involved too, and uh, something we'd love to be able to do again. I don't know if we'll be allowed, but uh, I thought it was a great success, and the kids loved it, and I think it was, a, again, a great atmosphere, and it was good for us to play a couple pretty tough teams. You had two good wins at home, and one of them against a team that's not in your region in Loris College. Uh, how much does that come into really your, your thinking when you're scheduling teams, knowing how heavily uh, you know, predicated the, the committee makes you know, decisions on region-based games? Well, it's tough because we generally schedule almost two years out. So we scheduled them before last year started. Um, they end up, ended up being an NSA tournament team, but you don't necessarily know that ahead of time. And... Uh, we just do the best we can, finding the best teams we can to play. And uh, this year's schedule hasn't been as tough. Um, and hopefully it doesn't come to hurt us here in the league play. Well, you can only play who's on your schedule uh, one game at a time. You know, one of the things that I think is becoming um, pretty consistent, at least in terms of themes with this group, you've got pretty much ten ladies that see the floor every night, and you might sprinkle in a few more here and there. But those, those groups of maybe five, five that start and then five that come off the bench, they seem to play together a lot, but there has been some intermingling between those two. What do you like about the way those two groups mix? Uh, they're very different groups. The, the first group's a more experienced group, probably smarter, definitely better defensively. Second group's probably a little, uh, can go off at any time offensively, but not as experienced and not as... Uh, not as good on the defensive end. So uh, that's why we've been mixing them a little more, trying to balance that a little bit better. Does the youth of a team, especially now that you're a significant chunk into the season, does that not bother you much anymore? At, at, at what point as a coach do you feel like, look, inexperienced players have got enough behind them now that there's a certain expectation? I, I think we're at that point where we expect now. I think they can still continue to get better as their confidence gets there, but I think they're starting to become a little more comfortable, and that's usually when you see them really take off um, but you know there's nothing no amount in the freshman year can make up for three and a half years that seniors and two and a half years that juniors have as well as it relates to Mount Union Abby Bartashevitz is easily having the best season of her career I think last year in one game she had a career high 11 points that's what she's averaging per game this year I'm sure some of that has to do with the fact she's playing more frequently but you had a chance to see her over the course of a few years. How has she grown in your eyes? Oh, she's definitely improved. Um, you know, it's it's hard to tell exactly when they don't play as much. You, you don't see, but but obviously she's doing a great job for them now, and uh, she's a, she's a, going to be a handful. We're going to have to do a great job on her. Before we let you go, instead of a key to the game, how about a key matchup? One you know man to man or, or or one person on their team that you feel like, man, we've got to stop yeah. them. Aaron White and uh, Sanborn both are, are problems that we're going to have to do a good job in the post. On the first time, they're looking inside for them a lot, and then uh, on the rebounding for right. those two. We've got to take care of them. Good luck. Thank you very much, Brandon. Jackets and Raiders coming up next on BWYellowJackets.com. 
We are just about to uh, have the national anthem inside the arena. So we'll take a quick timeout and we'll give you those starting lineups when we come back. Mount Union 7 and 4, Baldwin Wallace undefeated at 11 and 0. This is a, a matchup that is always fun to watch no matter what the records are between these two teams. It's a really good rivalry in conference play. BW and Mount Union coming up in just a minute here in Berea. It's lineup time on BWYellowJackets.com. We are just about ready for the opening tip between Baldwin Wallace and Mount Union. First for the visiting Purple Raiders and head coach Susie Bennett. She's assisted by Caitlin Carroll and Josh Ward. At guard, a 5'5 sophomore from Maslin Jackson High School, Anna Alkire, averaging four points, two and a half assists per game. At guard, the team's leading scorer, a senior from Wexford, PA, Abby Bartashevitz, by far having the best year of her career, averaging 11 points and four and a half rebounds per game. At guard from Lancaster High School, a 5'9 senior, Cassie Hennessy. She shoots the ball from the free throw line at an 88% clip. And then there are two dominating forwards, 5'11 sophomore from Twinsburg, Jamie Sanborn, who is averaging nearly seven points and seven rebounds per game. And the sophomore center, Aaron White, from the Cincinnati area, she went to Lakota East High School in Westchester, averaging 10 points and nearly nine rebounds per contest. She also leads the conference in field goal shooting percentage, making 60% of her shots. Alkire, Bartashevitz, Hennessy, Sanborn, and White to start for Mount Union. For the host, Yellow Jackets and head coach, Sherry Herrer, she's assisted by Cassie Seth and Cody Hartzler. At guard, a 5'4 freshman from Springboro High School. That's Cassie Hughes. Cassie Hughes is making uh, her 12th start of the season. She is a three point per game player with an assist and a half per night as well. Sydney Clark, the senior forward from Lake Ridge Academy in Parma. 5'9 senior Sydney Clark. Almost 10 points a game, four and a half rebounds per night. 
Katie Smith gets another start, her 12th of the year. She's a junior guard from Fairview High School in Fairview Park. Five points, two rebounds a night, and she, uh, she's a 36% shooter from the floor. Senior guard Mackenzie Colombo leads the conference in assist to turnover ratio. She's been great protecting the basketball this year. The team's leading score nearly 12 points and four assists per contest. And the final starter for BW is senior forward Clara Lemon, who is definitely gonna be needed tonight in a big way. She's a senior from Louisville High School, averaging seven and a half points and seven rebounds per night. Hughes, Clark, Smith, Colombo, and Lemon for the Yellow Jackets. Our officials tonight, Mark Wanierka, Pat Campbell, and Nick DeCesar. Mount Union in their black tops and black shorts with purple numbers and trim. And the Jackets in their home whites with brown and gold numbers and lettering. Glad to have you along. If you're just tuning in, I'm Brendan Gulick alongside Jeff Miller. Tonight's game is brought to you by the Hoffman Group. They're an Oswald company, and they'll handle all of your insurance and risk management needs. Clara Lemon jumps center with Aaron White, and we are underway. Maybe. I guess we had a bad jump, so they'll do it again. Oh, no. Okay, it's BW basketball. I think they caught White with uh, two touches there to before, <laughs> before they could get the ball back. BW has beaten Mount Union six of the last nine times they played each other, but this is the first time these two teams have met since last year's OAC title game. And it was sort of a surprise matchup in the OAC title contest as Mackenzie Colombo misses a layup. The reason that was the surprise, BW knocked off the number one seed in the semifinal round. That was Ohio Northern. Al Kier commits the turnover, so BW gets it right back. That was one of the biggest wins in program history, at least in the last decade for BW, to beat Ohio Northern like that in Ada. Definitely, Brendan. It's one of those things that nobody thought coming out of this being the four seed going in there. So that's a tough thing to ask a Jacket team to do. Beat the number one team and then beat the number three team. Clark buries a three. She's basically hitting one out of every three this season and she gives Baldwin Wallace a three nothing lead to get things rolling. BW will play a pretty good man to man defense and they'll do that most of the game but there's gonna be some times they might get away from it. Shot fake from Sanborn who drives the right side and misfired. Casey Hughes clears it away for the Jackets. Hughes, a young freshman who's really kind of been impressive here now that she's uh, tonight a dozen games into her college career. Seems to have a pretty good feel for the flow of the offense. It can always be difficult when you've got a young point guard that you're trying to hand the keys to the car, if you will. But as a freshman, they haven't lost with her as the starting point guard. Lemon in the low post. And she missed it high off the window. That ball never hit the rim, so it's a shot clock violation. There's going to be a great matchup down low between White and Lemon. That time, White wins the battle there. Good defensive positioning there to force Lemon kind of away from the, the shot, and she knocked it way off the glass for the shot clock violation. Aaron White, not only the top shooting percentage in the conference, but she's also the second leading rebounder in the OAC. Almost nine a game. In fact, that's something Mount Union is just so good at all the way around as Bartoshevitz tried for the entry pass. Into the left corner, Sanborn from 12, and she hits. Good little jumper from extended from the foul line there for Sanborn. Mackenzie Colombo, last time she played Mount Union, had a career-high 21 points. She reestablished that career-high against Heidelberg earlier this season. Hughes passes to Lemon. Smith works around the perimeter with 10 to shoot. Lemon, the baseline jumper. She's so good from that spot on the floor. Five to two. Sandboard couldn't come back on the backside help there, and Lemon was wide open for the little jumper. Nicely deflected out of bounds. It's a very different Mount Union team here in now 2017, the first game of the new calendar year. Has a lot to do with the fact that Annie Bova and Katie Clark both graduated. Annie Bova was one of the not just the best players in the conference, Jeff, but she was one of the best guards in the entire region. And she really was the uh, the engine for that Mount Union offense as they went to the NCAA tournament last year. Clark wants another three and she gets it. It's an eight to two lead for BW right out of the shoot. What BW definitely needed to do coming out is get hot shooting. They can't come out cold and then they get have to come back and that's where they usually seem to struggle in games. 
On the left side, Casey Morissette recently checked in. That one's swatted away in the paint. Colombo trying to keep possession going up the floor. Stutters on her way to the rim. No foul called, and it's 10-2, Baldwin-Wallace. Mount Union Purple Raiders have not taken care of the basketball in the early going, and BW's built a nice cushion at the outset. Jackets by eight, 6.45 left in the opening quarter. Back on the hard court inside her sprung gymnasium. Baldwin Wallace and Mount Union are playing in Berea. The men's teams are playing in Alliance. And after Mount Union got off to a wicked fast start, 15 to three, Baldwin Wallace called an early timeout, tried to slow, uh, slow that Mount Union roll. And it worked in large part. Jackets have climbed back in. It's halftime in Alliance and BW is down 46-42. So it's just a four point game at the intermission. We'll see if it's in another exciting game like last year in Alliance where Cam Coon put up 51 points in a one point double overtime loss. Kelsey Scott with a strong move to the rim. That ball pinballed its way toward the bench and it's out of bounds. So with the conference championship last year for the Purple Raiders, they went back to the NCAA tournament, finished the regular season with a 20 and seven mark and unfortunately, they bowed out in the very first round of the NCAA tournament. They were sent to Thomas Moore, who eventually won the national championship. Of course, Thomas Moore is a regional team in Crestview Hills, Kentucky. The Saints, on the heels of Sidney Moss, won the NCAA championship last year after nearly winning it two years ago. Turnaround shot looks good out of DeFord's hands, but it didn't go in for her. Scott, fighting for the rebound, stepped on the baseline. So it'll be Baldwin-Wallace basketball. Mount Union lost in the opening round of the NCAA tournament last year to Guilford College, the Quakers. I believe the final score in that game was 61-57. It was a close game, but it was played on a neutral court. Guilford was the representative from the ODAC from North Carolina. Colombo with a nice jump shot, 10 on the clock, and she put it through. And Baldwin Wallace has a comfortable 12-2 lead in the early going. The start the Yellow Jackets wanted, not what the Purple Raiders wanted to. They're going to have to start scoring and have, make some stops here. Mount Union's only hit one of four shots, and they've turned it over three times, turning into eight Baldwin Wallace points. Scott was out of control going to the rim there. Clark's already gotten it going from deep. She's hit a couple of three-point shots. Leads all scores with six. This is Hannah Fecht, but I think she traveled ahead of time. She sure did. Trying to set her feet for that three and just shuffled a little too much. Hannah Fecht, the top three-point shooter in the OAC. Made 29 three-pointers so far in her first 11 games. By the percentage, she's number two, not just in the conference, but in the Great Lakes region, top 15 in the country. So Fecht really has been good, connecting on 47% of her threes so far this season. So Yellow Jackets by 10 early in the game. Rachel Tinky trying to work it toward the uh, low post and it becomes another turnover. Tiffany Bentler on the right wing with Kara Marshall. Now Riley Schill up top, Fecht, and Wommeldorf round out the group. Marshall, that was a great pass but kind of caught Wommeldorf off guard. Wommeldorf looked like she was good, ready for the rebound and wasn't waiting for the bounce pass. Well, she composed herself, turned around, and put in a bank shot. Mount Union is trailing by 12. We're just over halfway through the first quarter. On the right side, can Hannah Ferguson find DeFord underneath? Back to a three in the left corner, and finally something goes home for Mount Union. Good from Haley Roddy, the senior from Medina Highland. 
Wommeldorf, a deep two, and that one's pure. They were three in that left corner. Actually, I beg your pardon, it was Tinky, not Roddy, that made the three-point bucket. Anyways, uh, Tinky's three-pointer snapped an 11-0 run for Baldwin-Wallace. Tinky's it, shot kind of reminded me how quick Bova would quick release back last year when you weren't, weren't looking at her. Boom, it's in. Annie Bova, even though her last year of eligibility on the basketball court was last season, Sanborn banks one home quickly. It's 16 to seven in the late first quarter. Bova still had one semester left of school, so she's been around the program and still obviously very close with her former teammates, trying to help Mount Union with a, a young group. Bartoshevitz, a nice story this year, finds Sanborn inside and she can't spin it home. So Jamie Sanborn going to the free throw line where she is just a 58% free throw shooter. But again, Bartoshevitz last year at one point scored a career high 11 points in one game. And now she's the team's leading scorer at just over 11 per game. Sanborn's first free throw off the mark. Many feel that uh, if you followed Mount Union basketball when Bartoshevitz was a freshman, he'd have told them, hey, this is gonna be your leading score when she's a senior. Might have left a few Purple Raider fans scratching their heads, but her growth along with her playing time has really improved over the years, and she's become a good staple now for Susie Bennett's group. Fact between the rings with now a mix of the first and second unit as Katie Smith is in there. Colombo and Clark wait to check back in late first. Lemon the high screen, back to Marshall. Lemon in the paint. Five to get one off. She needs some help, and it's stolen away. No shot clock violation because it is a steal for Mount Union. Great defense by White in the corner. Barta Shevitz for three, and the Purple Raiders are back in it. It was 14-2 Baldwin-Wallace. It's now a five-point game. After an 11-0 run for Baldwin-Wallace, a 9-2 run, and Mount Union is breathing again. Great ball fake from Schill, and she went out of control into Aaron White. The intangibles. We, we talk about her scoring and her rebounding. I'm impressed just right now in the first eight minutes of this game by her defense. She's, she locked Lemon down in the corner, trapped her pretty much, and stole that ball, and then takes the charge here on the back-to-back -back defensive stands for the Purple Raiders. Hennessy, White, Bartoshevitz, the three already up the floor for Mount Union as Sanborn joins them, along with the point guard here, Hannah Ferguson. Two minutes to go in the opening quarters. Ferguson feeds White. Nice spin move and a finish. That little, that little up and under, we saw that a lot with the Loris players when they were down here in the last, in the last game of the Yellow Jackets. So maybe that's something that the teams are seeing that they can go. Two teams that both just have a ton of height. The difference right now, though, early in this game, Mount Union's forwards have shown much more athleticism. Five to shoot for Sidney Clark. Forced it up, and it went a little too soft off the front of the rim. She tried to follow her shot, and actually it went off of Bartoshevitz, it looks like. So Clark's second effort helped her out as Kara Marshall leaves the floor and Casey Hughes returns. A couple of subs on the Mount Union side as well. Anna Alkier checks back in, sophomore from Massillon Jackson. Along with Roddy. Roddy, the senior captain. Paul Wallace has not trailed in this game so far, but Lemon's deep two rattles away. Purple Raiders two for two from beyond the arc on a three ball would tie it here. Roddy goes to her right. Alkire fires back to Bartoshevitz. Now active BW is around the perimeter defensively. White awkwardly bounced one wildly into the paint. Colombo with the steal. And she traveled as she pump faked and went to the basket. Alton Wallace just committed its fifth turnover of the first quarter. All five of those turnovers have come since Mount Union turned the ball over three times in the first two minutes. 
Purple Raiders haven't given it away since then. One possession game late in the first. Looking around the perimeter, Roddy and White both set screens for Bartoshevitz, who raises to tie the game, and she buries it. That's one of those things. It's that whatever guards up next for the Purple Raiders, it seems like we were talking about Boba. We're talking about the, everyone knows every year, it seems like that star. And this is exactly what she did last year. Just a few seconds left in the opening quarter. Colombo pulls up and buries one. There's the horn. Baldwin Wallace opened the game on a 14 2 run. That same run tied it just a moment ago for Mount Union, but BW takes the lead by two going into quarter number two, thanks to Mackenzie Colombo's jump shot just inside the perimeter. Competitive game so far in Berea. It's the Yellow Jackets ahead by a bucket after one quarter on BWYellowJackets.com. Our coverage of Yellow Jacket basketball continues tonight with the start of the second quarter. Mount Union, the road team here in this uh, resumption of OAC play now that both teams have completed all of their non-conference schedule. And pretty much so far, both teams shooting the ball well. BW 8 of 12 in that first quarter. Mount Union hit 6 of 11, but turned the ball over four times. An 8 of 12, that was early on, and then he's got a few at the end there. Great drive down the lane and an easy bucket. It's her first basket of the game. Katie Smith for Baldwin Wallace wanted to go baseline. And it was deflected away as Lemon looked for Hughes in the high peak. Bartoshevitz on the far side. And she gives away. Aaron White just battling for positioning with Clara Lemon underneath. Lemon doing a good job defending her. Artashevitz gives back out right side as Roddy drove. Kicked back out for three. Right in the face too, Bartashevitz again. She's just, she's starting to feel it and that's something the Yellow Jackets are gonna have to play a little better premier, perimeter defense. That's her third three in the team's fourth, giving Mount Union its first lead of the game at 21-18. Good offensive rebound for Sydney Clark, which is definitely an interesting point of emphasis because Baldwin Wallace has been one of the worst offensive rebounding teams in the entire uh, realm of D3 women's basketball this year. When you play a team that rebounds the ball as well as Mount Union, you have to be able to do better than just one and done if you miss a shot every time down the floor. As Clara Lemon commits the foul. Mount Union is, on average, out-rebounding its opposition this year by 12 and a half boards per game. That's 11th best in the country. And again, there's 440 teams that play D3 basketball. So to give you some perspective, to be top 10 in any statistic, you're totally dominating. You're, you're, I can't even answer that with, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're talking about 400 and some teams. We're going from the other spectrum. We had a Worcester team in here to, uh, three ga or two games ago that was ranked terribly in everything and to see that this is coming out of our conference that's just telling you how great the, the local area is in talent. Aaron White connects on both so she's now 8 of 14 from the free throw line this season doesn't get there very often even though she scores at a high clip 23-18 this is an incredible run for Mount Union as Sydney Clark tries to take some of the air out of their sails. Remember, this was 14-2, Baldwin-Wallace, 
midway through the first quarter. But the Purple Raiders lead by three. Bardashevitz looking for her fourth. She's barely hit the net on any of them. Colombo trying to get back on defense was knocked down in the paint and couldn't get there. And then Bardashevitz just drilled another one. She's already got 12, despite the fact that she averages 11 a night. Step back jumper from Wommeldor from the corner, offline. Roddy crashes the boards, but turns it over. Katie Smith, and a blocking foul called. That's on Haley Roddy. She was a Highland Hornet. Highland High School's about 20, 25 minutes from Baldwin Wallace's campus. So even though she's playing her college ball at Mount Union, she's closer to BW. I'm sure playing in front of some family and friends tonight. Sydney Clark in the low paint. Backing down Kelsey Scott, had it jarred loose for a minute. And Colombo, no, actually I beg your pardon, it was Clark that got called for three in the key. BW getting a little discombobulated on the offensive end the last, well, since four, four, four minutes left in the first quarter, they haven't really con controlled the ball or hit shots. Kelsey Scott a step inside the arc. Boy, she went up strong and got the foul. Kelsey Scott will shoot a couple of free throws. Let's talk a little bit about this Mount Union team and their head coach, Susie Bennett, who's been in Alliance now for a while. She was a tremendous player after graduating from Massillon Jackson High School. And now she's got a young uh, sophomore playing uh, point guard. I, I think there's uh, maybe a little bit of a, a comparison there. It's hard to ignore the Anna Alkire and Susie Bennett comparison. She likes to find the players that look exactly like her or played like her. She likes that intensity. So yeah, the comparisons are there. You don't want to tell that to a player that's playing for their coach that, hey, you know what? I did this too when I played here, or, you know, when I was a collegiate <laughs> athlete. Hughes threw an awkward pass underneath. And the wheels are falling off tonight for Baldwin Wallace down eight. Still a lot of game to go, but BW, after a hot start, has gone ice cold from the floor. Kelsey Scott forced it over the front of the rim. At its peak, the bottom of that ball may have been one inch above the iron. I'm not sure how that one rolled up and over. She threw it right from her chest like it was a, a chest pass up and in. It's a 7 nothing run for Mount Union. But if you extend it further than that, it's a 28-6 run for the Purple Raiders. Bettler. Finds Clark in the corner, seven to let it go. Colombo. The defensive stands, what we talked about earlier when that was fouled 14-2. Mountain Union's getting it and now throwing the Jackets out of their game. Clark with a poke away up top. Scott trailing her. And one! Kelsey Scott tried to knock Sidney Clark into next year. And Sidney Clark finished it going coast to coast. Scores around the conference. The upstart Muskinga Muskies Lead Marietta 19 to 17. Uh, Ohio Northern is leading Otterbein 18 to 11. And John Carroll is up by two over Heidelberg 24 22. And all of those are in the second quarter. Clark cannot complete the three point play. And so it remains an eight point game. Nearing the midway point of the second quarter, it's a good game on hand, but Mount Union right now. Honestly, more in control than the eight-point lead they have. BW is fortunate to be down only that little. Losing control in the corner, trying to regain it. Morissette. And then it came back to the top, and Colombo bailed her out with a foul. And that could be very costly for the last five minutes of this half, because that's a second on Colombo. Well, they've only marked it as the first up on the uh, scoreboard on the video board, but I think you're right. I'm pretty sure she's picked up two. We'll see if we can verify that you in just what? a moment. You know what, it is her first. I, it was a travel that I thought was the offensive foul down there. 
Okay. So it was her first. Aaron White banks one home. And it's back to a 10 point affair. And this, you're right, Brendan. This game could be a little more out of control than it is, but the Purple Raiders starters are mostly on the bench right now. Mackenzie Matthews has checked in the game. The sophomore from North Royalton only plays about eight minutes a night, but she's getting some valuable time lately as Hannah Fecht was too short from 15 feet away. BW's not even able to convert the little quick jumpers short range. Well, the Yellow Jackets scored 14 points in the blink of an eye. And they've had eight points now over their last 11 minutes. Three ball, too strong from Tinky. And a foul on the rebound. And I think it's going against Mount Union. Casey Morissette certainly acting like it was going to be called on her. That's her first. So it's Lemon, Smith, Wommeldorf. I beg your pardon, Wommeldorf just checked out. Lemon, Smith, Bettler, Fecht, and Matthews out there for Baldwin Wallace. Nice behind the back dribble. Fecht gave it to the near side. It's another turnover. That's BW's ninth giveaway. The first eight have resulted in 16 points. BW trying to keep the energy and enthusiasm at a high level despite the fact it's not going their way at the moment. So they'll call a 30 second timeout down by 10. You're watching Yellow Jackets basketball on BWYellowJackets.com. Coverage of Yellow Jacket basketball continues tonight. Jeff, way too many points given up off of BW turnovers, and it's led to a 10-point lead for Mount Union. Nine turnovers, 16 points by the Purple Raiders. Coach Hare is going to definitely talk about controlling the ball in the ha at a half. Well, when you combine the way that Mount Union is shooting the basketball from beyond the arc, with all of that momentum they're gathering, this is getting tough as Rachel Tinky's three makes it 35-22. The Mount Union Purple Raiders have hit six of seven from beyond the perimeter in the first half. Lots of purple in the stands tonight, and they make themselves known after Anna Alkire banks one in. 37-22. And those three-pointers just led to an easy layup because now they're worrying about guarding the perimeter. Matthews in the right corner, trying to pull it out. Baldwin Wallace got off to such a good start, but Mount Union never let it phase them. And Hannah Fecht got fouled, so with six on the shot clock, BW will have an inbound on the baseline. Hard to really put your finger on where this all started for BW. Obviously, Mount's shooting the ball well, but they just sort of let it spiral out of control. Turning the ball over. Great shooting by the Purple Raiders. One leads to the other, and then now it's let's get back into it and hurry up and try to. We're pressing, pressing the ball right now, and there's another turnover by Matthews on the inbound. But a traveling violation on Alkire gives it immediately back to Baldwin Wallace. BW is, like I was trying to say, is pressing so much right now to think about getting a basket, getting back in this game that. They're, they're having the unforced errors in their own, just turning the ball over too, way too much. Sherry Herrer is squatting down like a catcher in front of her own bench as Clark hits another shot. And she just sort of has a bewildered look on her face with the exception that Sydney Clark is having a nice first half with 12 points. Nobody else is really contributing for BW the way they typically have. 13 point ball game. White hasn't even been a big factor really in the post. It's DeFord who has the basketball. Nice pass to the near side and the jump shot from Hennessy sat on the rim and fell in. We saw a lot of those happen this year. Down, rim out. This one went down, came back up, spun around and fell in. Nice shot, good pressure there by Fecht to almost throw her off her game. First points for Hennessy. 
Two minutes to go in the first half. BW needs something to feel good about before they refocus. Clara Lemon missed from point blank range. Lemons hit one of six from the floor in the opening 20 minutes. Another three. That one was short and left from Tinky. And Effect ran it down. Tinky, or rather Alkire, picks it off. And Fecht fouls her. Mount Union just flat out wants it more right now. They're playing a little harder on both ends of the floor, and it's making a big difference. Yeah, that was a lazadaisical pass up floor, and Alkire just was waiting for it like a good center fielder was going to come for, for an easy fly ball. Made a great play on it, went hard to the rim, and in fact had to foul her. First free throw, not nearly on the mark for Alkire. You know, the other thing that really strikes you about these two teams, Jeff, Sometimes when you have a really nice season and, or you're off to a, a good roll, you're relying on one or two players that are carrying you a lot of the way. Maybe sometimes you've got that all-conference player as BW gets the ball back here. Maybe you've got that dominating all-conference player who can set the tone for you. Neither one of these two teams seem to have that player. It's been so much more about both teams' depth that's help them get off to a good start. Yeah, you're definitely right with that. We, we do have, both teams have all OAC players but not that one you would say, oh, he's going to be the dominant scorer, the dominant rebounder. We have a – BW has an all-AC player in Clark who has an all-around decent game, but she's not that person that you're going to say, I'm going to get that ball. Mackenzie Colombo seems to be taking that role more for the Yellow Jackets this year. Clara Lemon was part of the all-tournament team in the Ohio Athletic Conference last season. She's got four points now. She hits both of her free throws. Cutting it back to a 13-point hole. But still a steep hill to climb for BW after a uh, hard contact on the screen there draws a foul and it benefits Bartoshevitz, who will shoot one and one. I beg your pardon, she'll shoot two. Definitely a foul there, but I think Bartoshevitz gave it a little more acting there to get the call for sure because she went down like a ton <laughs> sack of potatoes and I don't even think Mackenzie Matthews could really knock her over if she tried as much as she wanted to. You could tell Abby Bartoshevitz is a real competitor. She plays with a certain level of just grit. That fierce look on her face, focused all the time. She's running on both ends of the floor. She's acting like a leader. 40 to 26, Mount Union. And Mackenzie Colombo was fouled in the lane before attempting that shot. You know who she reminds me of? You just alluded to it non-verbally. Rosa Lamatina. I mean, a spitting image, not just physically, but the way she plays the game. Rosa Lamatina, a former guard from Westlake High School that played at Mount Union, and she just, the games are eerily similar. Very intense, very, like you said, I was watching when you said that, I was like, the viciousness. You know, not vicious, but just how the intensity of the playing of the game, and. I want the ball and you're not gonna take it from me and I'm gonna score at you at will. Rosa Lamatino was a flat out baller. Artishevitz with a nice crossover and then kinda had that one mishandled as the ball went out of bounds. All right, final minute here of the second quarter. BW needs to get two possessions and actually you know, score on both of them and get a couple stops here and make sure that they, they get with, cut this within eight. White and Sanborn both check back in. Colombo to the left side as Ferguson tried to cut her off. Nice defensive adjustment. Matthews was clamped down on quickly, 15 to shoot it. Lemon with the high pick. Colombo rolls through and she scores. White and Sanborn both kind of looked like they were lost and who was going to take that over and Colombo just went right to the rack. 10 point affair. Aaron White backing down Clara Lemon. And with the left arm, she just flicks it up and in. The lefties have been dominating in the last few games of the post players against the Jackets. Shot clock is turned off. Baldwin Wallace trying to maybe cut this to a single digit deficit with a three. Colombo, back to Lemon. Colombo for three. 
And it does not go. Baldwin Wallace led the game 14 to two in the middle of the first quarter. But from that point on, it has been all Mount Union. The Purple Raiders lead the game 42 to 30, thanks to a balanced effort, but four three balls from Abby Bartashevitz in the first half have really bolstered their campaign. And Baldwin Wallace has some soul searching to do in the locker room. Mount Union by 12. Halftime numbers coming your way shortly on BWYellowJackets.com.
just about ready for the second half as Baldwin Wallace and Mount Union had played an entertaining first half that honestly early in the game was awfully one-sided favoring BW but the final 15 minutes of the uh, first and second quarters totally belonged to the visiting Purple Raiders. Alongside Jeff Miller, I'm Brendan Gulick, and tonight's game is brought to you by Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider for Baldwin Wallace University, and by the Comfort Inn and Suites in Middleburg Heights, where comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests. Jeff, it's a Mount Union team that shoots on average 28 three-point shots per game. So it's not a surprise that they make so many or that they shoot it at a good percentage because they seem to chuck them up all the time. But that doesn't diminish the fact they hit six out of eight in the first half and they've run up to a 12 point lead. 28, you hit eight in the first two quarters, but that's the key that just turned this game right the other way. Bartoshevitz, Tinky, I mean, they've been hitting them right dead eye, right in front of Yellow Jacket defenders and not even worrying about it. Then they, then they shuffled around the defense to guard them and then they just get an easy layup in the back door. So it's been all Purple Raiders. Baldwin Wallace, by the way, has shot the three ball just fine themselves. They've hit 10 out of 25. In fact, only two baskets the whole first half for BW were non-three-point shots. The problem is they didn't come at nearly a high enough clip. All right, we're ready for the second half. Clara Lemon played pretty well in the first half. Let's see what, uh, see what she can do going out in half number two as Katie Smith is going to the free throw line. And I say that about Lemon, even though she didn't shoot the ball all that well at one of six, I think she's doing a really good job defensively trying to limit Aaron White's effectiveness. Yeah, it's the intangibles that you don't see on the, in a box score that she's shuffling her feet and keeping White kind of out of the paint. Aaron White's only shot the ball three times the whole game so far. As Katie Smith puts both of them up and in. So the Jackets strike first in the second half. By the way, remember we told you earlier that the men are playing down in Alliance as that travel goes against the Purple Raiders. Mount Union leads BW 78-68 on the men's side in a game where both teams have shot the ball pretty well and have both taken care of the ball pretty well. But Mount Union is out in front by 10. And that game's got, uh, let's see, about four minutes left. After a missed shot, the ladies are tipping around the rebound and the Jackets keep it. Sydney Clark wants a three. She got it! First she gets the offensive rebound. Then Sydney Clark hits her third three of the game. She's got 15 points. Just what they needed to do to come back to get back in this game. Play some defense, make the Purple Raiders turn it over, and then knock down shots. High bank shot fell to Clark on the miss. Her career high is 22, and she can't convert from right underneath the basket. Alcon on the far side of the floor as about 50 BW students file into the game out of nowhere. <laughs> the indoor track and field team. Oh, there it is. Okay. Meanwhile, Abby Bartashevitz picks up right where she left off, and she's got her fifth three ball of the game. So it's a 10-point affair. Bartashevitz at the top of the arc wants another one. This girl's got to stop shooting it if you're BW. She's got six threes on six attempts, Jeff, and she hasn't hit the rim on any of them. 19 points. They used to call Bobby Sura the gym rat. I think uh, Bartashevitz is taking over because there's not a shot in this gym she doesn't want. Colombo swinging around to the left side. All of a sudden, that momentum BW had built out of the gate completely quashed. Smith, a deep two. And she missed it left. Sanborn into the forecourt, gives off. Alkine to run the point, excuse me, Alkire to run the point. Cassie Hennessy looking for Bartashevitz underneath. Good little drop pass, and Aaron White scores. Bartashevitz knew that's where she did not want to be underneath against Clara Lemon. 
comes back around underneath the hoop, throws a bounce pass to White, and she lays it up with the left hand. Sherry Herrer wants a Baldwin-Wallace timeout with 7-16 left in the third quarter. All of a sudden, it is Baldwin-Wallace on the wrong end of an 8-0 run. Mount Union by 15 on BWYellowJackets.com. Colombo, Lemon, Smith, Hughes, and Clark. The starting five out there for Baldwin-Wallace. And they've got a tall order in front of them here after Mount Union ripped off eight straight points to balloon their lead to 15. Sydney Clark having one of the best games of her 2016-2017 campaign. 15 points on six of eight shooting, including three threes. And yet it's the Jackets down by 15 with five to shoot. Katie Smith tried to drop it off underneath, and it was turned over. Baldwin Wallace has not trailed by 15 points many times or a, a deficit like this all year. Scott, another time, just flicking it over the front of the rim, 52-35. If you're just joining us, remember, BW is unbeaten, folks. They've got 11 straight wins to open the season. It's the best start since the 03-04 campaign as Lemon banks one home. A lot of game left here, though. The foul on this end goes on Mount Union. It's on Alkire, her first. I wasn't sure on that. The only person on the floor that was certain that that call was against Mount Union was Casey Hughes. She was already down in the, up in the offensive end. Hughes finds herself over on the bench now after substitution. Kara Marshall checks in along with Riley Schill. Colombo hard to the rim and it doesn't go. Lemon with a big time offensive rebound, but a jump ball was called. That's about as high as Clara Lemon's jumped all season. You're going to have to do that when you're trying to jump over White and Sanborn. To go back to what you said we are talking about earlier with Clark, her best point total of the season so far is 21 points in the second game of the year. She had an 18-point game again against Marietta, so this will be her second best conference point total of the year. And still a lot of work to go. Scott underneath where she's gotten a couple. And it was picked right out of her arms by Clark. Two on two. And Colombo thinks better of it. Nice crossover dribble on Ferguson, and Colombo missed it right in front of the hoop. Something I've noticed on both last couple possessions for both teams, they're both looking for the contact on the layup instead of just going strong. Bartashevitz is human. She finally missed. Riley Schill from near the free throw line gives to Colombo, and her three is short left. This just has the makings of a frustrating night for Baldwin Wallace. Hard to believe that they scored 14 points in the first five minutes, Jeff. But in basically now two full quarters since then, the roll has totally slowed for the host jackets. And every time they make a move to get back in it, Mountain Union just comes back and says, Bye-bye, we're taking care of this. We're going to go on an 8-0, 14-0 run, whatever. Tinky tried from Denon and missed. Bartashevitz has shot more three-point attempts than anybody in uh, the OAC this year as Clark can't find the bottom there. But I'm hard-pressed to believe that she's found a day as successful as this one, six of seven from beyond the perimeter. Ferguson runs the point. Good ball fake by Morissette, but she lost it. Clark comes away with another one. The six three balls for Bartashevitz is a season high as Sidney Clark missed from the middle of the key. And Lemon was out of bounds. 
four for seven against SUNY New Paltz back in game number three this season. And four of nine from beyond the arc against Oberlin were the previous single game bests. But she's never shot better than 50% in the game and Bartoshevitz at her first six before missing. I was gonna say, yeah, we were talking about earlier that she going into this season was 11. I didn't think she was gonna have six three-pointers anywhere in, in, until this year and she's still in until tonight. Not what you wanted somebody to do tonight when, if you're the undefeated Jackets. 19 points for Bartoshevitz is the second best she's had all year. Three ball missed from Tinky in the corner and Sanborn's gonna go to the free throw line. That should be the second foul on Feck, just the first of the third quarter for the Yellow Jackets. Coach Matt Cole of the track and field team, a Mount Union grad trying to get the, his Yellow Jacket track and field stars to cheer on these jackets. And the gymnasium has gotten three times as loud since the track and field team Made an appearance. Sanborn got them both. By the way, I asked her before the game, and she kind of said with a smile on her face that she is not related to the former Division III men's basketball player of the year, Tyler Sanborn, who played at Guilford College and graduated in 2010 as Riley Schill missed from the middle of the key. Tyler Sanborn played for the uh, LA Lakers D-League team in Las Vegas. He played a couple years overseas, and he's now an assistant coach at Hampton Sydney, which is another really good Division III basketball program. She was kind of laughing. She goes, I wish I had that sort of bloodline, but uh, not even a long lost cousin. Anyways, Sanborn thought that would have been fun. She is a sophomore from Twinsburg. Free throws are good, 54-39. Pretty good player in her own right without having the bloodline. <laughs> no doubt about that. Jamie Sanborn's having a tremendous season and still a young player. More free throws coming for the ladies in black and purple tonight. Great cut there. I believe that was by Roddy who's going to go to the line. Good look. They, quick ball movement there. I think Sanborn got it right back to the cutting Roddy. And the foul picked up there by uh, Clara Lemon. That's her second, team second. Mount Union has basically led this game by double digits from essentially the middle of the second quarter on. 55-39. Right, if we don't get to, uh, a change here in the remaining half here, looks like it's gonna be a Purple Raider sweep as it stands right now as the men are beating the Baldwin Wallace men by 10 points with 12 seconds left to go in that game in Alliance. Riley Schill exploded to the hoop, but couldn't find the bottom of it. And a traveling call keeps it on the BW end of the floor. Well, on the men's side, I'm sure it's frustrating that they're gonna drop a game. They're down by 10 with basically 10 seconds left. But when you start a game on the wrong end of a 15 to three run, it's usually hard to come back from that. Although the proof right in front of us sort of negates that. Baldwin Wallace jumped out to a 14 to two run the first three minutes and 15 seconds of this game today. Deep two from Wommeldorf, no. And a foul puts it the other way. By the end of the first quarter, BW had an 18-16 lead because Mackenzie Colombo beat the buzzer with a jump shot. And from the end of that first quarter on, Mount Union has thoroughly dominated this competition. Could be a little bit of surprises going around this whole conference. Ohio Northern's only up by eight points against Otterbein, and I just looked a little bit ago, and it was only a one-point lead, so Northern went on a little run there, but the number 15 team is in a, in a battle with Otterbein tonight. Alkair needs some help, finds Tinky. Rachel Tinky, another good three-point shooter on the left wing there. She'll let it fly. And it got the shooter's roll. 59-39. I don't think I've seen a three-pointer hit the rim, bounce off the back of the rim, roll back, and then fall down. Fact wants three and got all of them. Well, these are two of the best three-point shooting teams in the conference, and we expected that if they get hot, we could see a game like this. Unfortunately, BW just hasn't hit enough of them to keep up. 
And Feck's going to have to knock those down while her limited time here. She picked up her third foul that last time down. Varda Shevitz. Not that time, but she got her own rebound and was too short. A third try, though. Sanborn from straight on finds Tinky, and it's blocked around the perimeter. Nice block for Alex Starr. It still turns into two Mount Union points. Tinky didn't give up on that, but yeah, like you said, a great, great block for Alex Starr, who just can't check into the game. Rachel Tinky's got a ton of talent. Her father is actually the head coach at the, uh, I should say, uh, of Canfield High School's women's team. Alex Starr hits a three ball and keeps the possessions moving back and forth. Both teams exchange shots around the perimeter. So not a surprise to see Tinky having some success at the collegiate level. But still a young player. Tinky Varda Shevitz wants another three. She's got seven, Jeff. Bad, not a, I was going to say Sanborn was looking wide open and they threw it right across their head to Varda Shevitz. Well, I think they'll take the three compared to a two. Tying a season high 22. The only thing that seems to stop Abby Bartashevitz is a timeout on the floor. Wommeldorf has it deflected out of bounds and it goes back to Mount Union. And I think Coach Hare has a good gripe here. I think Aaron White blocked that ball and then they're saying possession to Mount Union. I don't know where, I didn't see anybody else touch it. And I was gonna say too, Bartashevitz, the only thing that stops Bartashevitz, you said a timeout, I think Bartashevitz is the only thing stopping Bartashevitz. It's a 19 point game. Arda Shevitz, the only one that stayed on the floor for Mount Union as they get a fresh group out there. She doesn't care who she's playing with, she'll continue to attack the rim. That one was a little too short. Casey Morissette checks back in. A junior from Firelands High School. Kelsey Scott circling around, receives that inbounds pass. Right side now, this is Megan Hess is getting in the action. She's seen a little bit of playing time. Renee DeFord rounds things out. Kelsey Scott's three is misfired. Shot clock is off at the tail end of the third quarter. BW scored the first five points of the quarter, but Mount Union quickly put the brakes on that. Riley Schill, tough shot, she got it. 64-47. Varda Shevitz from deep. What in the world is going on with her? You gotta be kidding me. Even the BW fans clapping to support her effort. 25 for Varda Shevitz through three quarters. It's a 20 point game on her way to the fourth at Ersprung Gymnasium. BW Yellow Jackets have played better basketball, but man, has Abby Bartashevitz been the story tonight. Her 25 points have put Mount Union up by 20. Bartashevitz has hit eight of 10 three-pointers, and she just hit one from Middleburg Heights a minute ago. Colombo was fouled as her pocket got picked inside a suddenly rowdy Ersprung Gymnasium. I think she really hit that from the attack with the attack zone on the volleyball court. 
I mean, she was a full three steps beyond the three-point line. Columbo's had a quiet game, and she is fouling the way up. I mean, Columbo's got 10 points. She's playing okay in that regard, but four of 12 shooting. It's just been tough for her. Give Mount Union credit defensively for making it that way. Sydney Clark with 15, leading the uh, Yellow Jackets. Clark has hit six of BW's 17 baskets. Colombo's got four, and Clara Lemon has two. Four and two field goals, that is. Colombo splits the pair. They're going to want to get back in this game at all, being down 19. Now you're going to have to take every stoppage like that and hit both of them. Big hole to climb for the undefeated Yellow Jackets. Colombo, good job hedging that screen. Alkire raises and missed it. Riley Schill all the way to the 10, and she missed an open layup. Sanborn clears it from Mount Union. I think Schill was coming in hard, so hard she thought she was going to get contact and didn't think about more about the layup and looking for the contact and threw it pretty hard off the glass. Aaron White, nice post move. Good box out by Wommeldorf. And the Jackets go the other way. Still man-to-man -man defense for Mount Union. It's been that way all game long. Wommeldorf got an easy bounce pass from Colombo and finished. Three Purple Raider defenders there, and they all kind of slid and just watched it go right between them. Bartoshevitz is calling for it, but not getting it in the corner. She'll switch halves of the floor. Too much time on the clock for Bartoshevitz to take that shot. She likes it with no time. <laughs> she caught and shot all in one motion there, and it still becomes an offensive rebound. Mount Union continuing to dominate the glass. Out rebounding the Yellow Jackets 28 to 15 through the first three quarters. Two minutes and change into quarter number four. Bartoshevitz had it blocked by Colombo. Two on two. And Colombo is fouled before the shot. No continuation awarded. BW led the game by 12 in the first quarter, but trails by 17. Largest hole of the game was 20. That was not that long ago in the third quarter. Colombo attacking, and she did not draw a foul. The ball stays with BW, though. Well, the chances of throwing together an undefeated season are astronomically high. It's just so difficult to, oh wow, great play by Colombo. She threw it off of Ferguson, who then recovered defensively. Unbelievable. Sandborg gave her a big block too. A missed layup right underneath the basket is probably going to haunt Haley Roddy. Anyways, the, the chance to throw together an undefeated season is just so difficult. It's not like you're going to have an easy time doing that. Well, the Yellow Jackets are being tested right now for really the first time all season in this way. Mount Union is a young team, but they, honestly, Jeff, they play with a lot of confidence. And when you get a hot shooter like Bartoshevitz heating up, look out. I wouldn't even say that this is a young team. They look like they've been playing together for four years. The confidence level, obviously, yes, you have the hot hand in Bartoshevitz, but everybody just wants the ball, plays great defense. Alkire, Sanborn, and White are all sophomores. That's a scary thing if you don't like Mount Union and you uh, cheer for anybody else in the conference because I think the Purple Raiders have a bright future if they continue to build like this. Schill. Back out to Hughes. By the way, Hannah Fact has four fouls, so she has to be extremely careful. Sydney Clark turns and missed. Fact kept it alive. Fresh clock to work with. 
Clark is being really defended tightly around that perimeter just in case. Lemon wanted to turn and Sanborn grabbed her arm. That's the fourth on Jamie Sanborn. Sanborn's got seven points and five rebounds, but now she's playing with her back against the wall. That quickly, Bartashevitz back up, White's in, and Scott recheck, checks back into the game too. Ferguson helped guard the inbound. Schill got it right back. It was just out of control, forcing it up there. BW has not looked comfortable from the five minute of the first quarter on. The opening couple minutes, they got some shots to fall, and ever since then, Mount Union has made it difficult defensively, and they've started hitting some shots that just put insurmountable pressure on this Yellow Jacket group. Ferguson missed the layup, but was on the baseline when she got it back. Mount Union has cooled off, by the way. They have not scored yet in the fourth quarter. In the first five minutes here. BW still trails by 17. A rematch of last year's OAC title game, which went Mount Union's way after BW won both games in the regular season. Clark for three. Too strong. Ferguson clears it. The second of those two wins in the regular season was in alliance on Alyssa Monroe's buzzer beater in overtime as Riley Schill comes up with a steal. And she controls her body to score. Just goes to show, Jeff, from year to year, even if you have a similar team, it can be a very different season. You never know the outcome in the OAC. It's, it's one of those funny things, and we were talking about it pregame. Two wins, one win, you know, one and one, two and up. And every year, it seems like that year that's one and one, Mount Union wins that first game. So they now they have something to build on to go. If we beat we beat the undefeated team on their court, now we gotta make sure we win on our place. It's never easy to go down and play in alliance. No doubt about that though. It's always tough shooting at the McPherson Athletic and Academic Complex. 69-52, that's the first basket of the fourth quarter for Mount Union. Eight points now for Kelsey Scott. The foul goes against the Raiders, and so BW will shoot two with Mackenzie Colombo standing at the line. Second personal on Anna Elkire. BW won't have too long to sulk about a game like this and they've got to quickly get back in rhythm and go play a Wilmington team on Saturday again it's not over but this certainly is not looking good for the Jackets tonight as Colombo hits only one out of two Jeff Wilmington is really good this year they've beaten handily the teams they should beat and of their four losses three of them are to nationally ranked teams including the national champion from a year ago Coach Shreve always tends to play those stronger teams. He has an up year, down year, but it always seems that they're in the top three, four, and if they're not, they're a team to reckon with because they always seem to knock off a top team when they shouldn't even be in a game. Fact wants a triple. It just didn't go, but Clark got the offensive rebound, and she's got one more coming. BW's not done yet. Timeout, Mount Union. It's a Purple Raiders timeout. 17 points for Sydney Clark. Baldwin Wallace still down 14, but they've got a little bit of momentum late. But is it too little, too late? Stick with us here on BWYellowJackets.com. Tonight's Yellow Jacket women's basketball game is brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division. They are the official health care provider for Baldwin Wallace Athletics. By American International, 
When you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. And by the Oriole Cafe, a great place for sports. Just two minutes up the street from campus. Sidney Clark looking for one more to complete an impressive three-point play. It just didn't work out for her there. Four minutes to go in regulation. Mount Union trailed 14 to two midway through the first and then ripped off a major run to put BW in a deep hole. Nice job by Mackenzie Matthews to draw the foul. And so BW gets it back. Baldwin Wallace needed to call a timeout in the middle of the second quarter. 10 minutes after they led by 12, they were down by 10. And it just got worse from there. Now it's 14. It had been 20 at one point. They're doing everything they need to on the offensive and defensive end. They just got to keep doing it and getting points and not missing free throws when they have the stoppage, too. Bartoshevitz with a career day, 25 points on 8 of 10 three-pointers. She hit her first six in a row without touching the rim on any of them. Lemon receives that pass with a smile on her face. She plays with such joy. She gets her own rebound with a great pass to Matthews. Lemon the offensive rebound, and that time it couldn't be controlled the whole way through. Even after a frustrating mistake, Lemon runs up the floor. That young lady is always smiling. Fun to watch somebody have as much fun as they're having on the floor. Even when you make a, a bonehead play, she, you know, like you said, always out here having fun. A lot of play, team, uh, players would put their head down and then lose it completely the rest of the game. Tinky on the left side is double teamed. Alkai right back to Bartoshevitz. White was open with seven to let it fly. And another offensive foul. That's three on Aaron White with under three minutes to go. Mount Union has been far less effective offensively in the fourth quarter. They've scored two points in over eight minutes. But BW is still down by 14 as Riley Schill missed an open bunny. Fought for it and tied up a jump ball instead of fouling Alkire. Almost feels like we're in for a frantic finish even though it's a 14 point game. BW would hit some of these open mid shots. <laughs> this game could be a lot closer. Colombo on the inbound. Great spin move. Bartoshevitz did not foul her. And Mount Union has numbers coming up the floor. Mount Union there. This looked like we're up 14. There's two minutes. Let's work some clock. Alkire, the south of the strike, gives it away. Eight to let it go. White banging around with Lemon, but she took too many steps. Mount Union turned the ball over several times early. Then they went on a stretch where they played terrific basketball. And now they can't seem to do anything right. 17 Mount Union giveaways. I mean, put it in this perspective, Jeff. Mount Union scored 26 points in the second quarter. 25 points in the third quarter, and they've got two points in eight minutes here in the fourth quarter. And Baldwin Wallace can't cut the lead down any further than it is. They've only scored eight, so two, a fourth quarter that nobody thought would be happening between these two teams. There's a foul reaching around from behind. That's the fourth on Aaron White. Purple Raiders next game on Saturday is another road affair. They're heading down to Westerville to play the Otterbein Cardinals. And they'll play two in a row against Marietta and Capital at home. As Clara Lemon steps to the strike. Meanwhile, Baldwin Wallace goes to Wilmington, but six of BW's eight home games, I should say six of BW's eight games in the month of January will be played in this building. Late, late home games this year. They, we only saw him twice up till 
right before Christmas. I think they were home twice the entire November and December. Lemon missed, Sidney Clark the offensive board. All of a sudden, Baldwin Wallace is grabbing lots of offensive rebounds. Colombo attacking, and she finished. This is as close as BW's been the entire second half. Timeout, Purple Raiders. 14 for Colombo. BW's down by 11, but there's only a minute 27 left in the fourth quarter. It's a full timeout for Mount Union, and they are choosing not to advance the ball up past half court. We'll take it with them. BW hanging tough on BWYellowJackets.com. Union 69, Baldwin Wallace 58. With just under 90 seconds left in the game, Mount Union is in a really good spot, but they can't seem to score at all in the second half, or I should say in the uh, in the fourth quarter. As Sidney Clark commits a necessary foul in the backcourt. The third quarter, Mount Union was fine. In fact, they thought they shot the ball pretty well in that third quarter. Scored 25 points. The Purple Raiders shot it at a 42% clip. But in the fourth quarter, Mount Union is one of eight from the floor with five turnovers. And Mackenzie Matthews commits a sloppy foul. So that's the fourth, which means BW is now at the limit with a buck 19 to play. BW is out, uh, outscoring Mount Union 11 to two since the end of that third quarter. Sanborn gets it into Bardashevitz, who has dazzled here tonight. Eight of ten from three for Bardashevitz. And a foul on Sidney Clark. Mount Union looks as content, even with only two points in the fourth quarter, as content as can be is to, if we score four points and we beat you, we're happy with it. You know, Coach Vanette will probably tell you that later, that she's not happy that they scored four points in the fourth quarter, but they're going to they're gonna walk out of here with the win, and they'll be happy however they did it. First free throw for Rachel Tinky did not go in. Tinky's also had a good day, four of 10 shooting, including three triples. Bartashevitz and Tinky have accounted for all 11 three-pointers as Tinky connects on the second free throw. I think the last 11, one, one 11 is gonna come down to which team's gonna actually hit their free throws and when the score points when the clock is not moving. Sidney Clark with the right hand going through the left lane. That's the worst thing for Mount Union, stopping the clock unnecessarily and giving Sidney Clark a chance to shoot a couple. Clark's pretty good from the line, almost 80% on the season. And she is having one of her best games of the year today. Give her 18 points with that made free throw. High, her season best for points, most points scored in an OAC game this year. And she reestablishes that new high. All right, BW down by 10 with a minute to go. Lemon reached around and fouled Sanborn. And so now the sophomore Jamie Sanborn will shoot a couple of free throw tosses. Well, we kind of knew this would be a tough stretch for BW playing Mount Union at home and going to Wilmington and returning home to play Ohio Northern. Those are three really good teams consecutively in conference. First shot missed a little long. And Coach Harry would tell you that too going into it, that she knew they knew they kind of, they had a tough one against Muskingum, who's an upstart team this year. But then you had your Mariettas and your, your Heidelbergs and you know, the teams that you should be early and this this three game stretch was what you had to look at coming out of the out of your non-conference break. Sanborn missed them both. Life for the Jackets. 
Colombo throws it to Fecht. Now Colombo for three. Just might not be BW's night. Deflected out of bounds. Good active defense all the way up the floor. And credit to Mount Union, they literally passed their way up the floor. One dribble in the backcourt, that was it. I'm not sure why BW didn't go for the foul. I know when it got down to the forecourt, Hannah Fecht wasn't going to pick up her fifth foul because they still want to bring her back in now for a three-point attempt. Artashevitz killing some time with under a minute to go. And Hennessy is hugged by Riley Schill. Well, it's certainly not over. We learned that in the Worcester game when the Worcester Fighting Scots were uh, basically down and out. They were down five points with seven seconds left in the Holiday Invitational hosted by BW. And then they were down three points with three seconds left. Fouled while shooting a three ball and hit all three free throws to send the game to overtime. But that seemed like a rare circumstance. That free throw is good. So BW has given up now four points in the fourth quarter and only one basket from the field. Colombo did a good job putting the defender where she wanted her. And it's a 71-62 effort with just under 22 seconds left. I'm looking around the conference, Brendan. Capital's going to pick up their first win. They're beating that. We've just been talking about how great Wilmington's playing this year. They're losing by 16 points to wow. Capital, who has not won a conference game this year and only four games all year. Other scores, Muskingum is going is beating Marietta by uh, by 14, 65-51. Five and a half minutes left to go in that game. Ohio Northern pulled away from Otterbein, 76-56 with 55 seconds left. And John Carroll is falling right now to Heidelberg, 65-57. So you're going to have a nice little barrier there in the in for second place here in the conference with Baldwin Wallace, Muskingum at you know at three and at four and one. Artashevitz fouled in the backcourt with 20 seconds to play. It's Mackenzie Matthews picks up the foul. Tonight's Yellow Jacket basketball game was brought to you by Crown Plaza in Middleburg Heights. If you're looking for a quality place to stay before or after any Yellow Jacket contest, we hope you choose the Crown Plaza. Artis Shevitz misfires. Also by Parkway Auto Care in Berea, Strongsville Express Tire and Automotive, and Montville Express Tire and Automotive. We serve the southwestern suburbs of Greater Cleveland. Bartoshevitz apparently can only hit them if they're beyond the three-point line. BW calls timeout, and the uh, lid on the rim apparently in full force now for Mount Union. It's just awkward looking at a box score and seeing Mount Union go 16, 26, 25, and four. <laughs> the offense is totally evaporated in the fourth quarter. It just hasn't made enough of a difference. And you're not even hitting free throws, so that's why I was just kind of questioning why BW wasn't fouling there with a minute left because they have only hit two. Well, Mount Union's hit 12 of 20 from the free throw line, but they've hit 11 of 18 from the three-point line. What was the last time you saw a team have a higher three-point percentage than free throw percentage when both of those categories consisted of at least 15 shots? Grinnell. <laughs> the Grinnell men's team. I mean, Fair enough. That's about the only one I could probably compare that to that they never went to the foul line, I don't think. Ever. <laughs> Grinnell plays a very interesting style of basketball. It's kind of fun to watch. It's uh, somewhat unrealistic. Nevertheless, the shot clock has turned off as Hannah Fecht wants a triple, and it's not going to fall. Riley Schill commits a foul, and with that miss from Fecht, nine-point deficit with under 10 seconds to play. It's not looking good. Alkire could milk it here with at least one. And she got it. Three points for Anna Alkire. She did not hit the second. 10-point game. 
Clara Lemon tries a three, it does not go. And the Mount Union Purple Raiders have defeated the undefeated Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. BW falls to 11 and one. Mount Union with a very impressive win on the road. Final score tonight, 72-62. BW falls for the first time in 2016, 2017. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we're hoping to hear from head coach Sherry Herrer on BWYellowJackets.com. All right, welcome inside our post-game coverage of the Yellow Jackets tonight. And it was a frustrating night for Baldwin Wallace at a 14-2 lead early in the game and fell by a final score of 72-62. We're here with head coach Sherry Herrer. I know we're not used to this. It's the first time all season that, uh, that the Jackets have fallen on the wrong side of the ledger. Is there anything in particular tonight on the offensive side early in the game that you just didn't think clicked after that first five minutes? Uh, we got sloppy. We turned it over. Um, bottom line is, though, they went 82% from the field in the second quarter. You can't, I mean, one kid goes 8 to 10 from three. Like, you, you got to guard better than that. Yeah. And um, we didn't do it tonight. They, they shot it great, and we shot it poorly. We didn't do it together, and uh, we'll go get it better. Hopefully this will be a chance for the Yellow Jackets to learn, knowing that you're going to play a Wilmington team on Saturday. It only gets tougher. Is a very good team. They have played arguably as difficult to schedule as anybody in the country so far. What's the biggest learning point? Calling things, you just got to get more physical. And they got physical and we backed down instead of getting tough and squaring up and, and getting after it. And that's what you got to do. When it's not being called, you got to be tough. And we weren't very tough today. Well, we appreciate your time. I know it's a tough loss tonight. Thank you. All right, final stats when we come back on BWYellowJackets.com. Wrapping things up inside Ersprung Gymnasium where the previously unbeaten Jackets of Baldwin Wallace University fell by 10 points tonight to the Mount Union Purple Raiders. Brennan Gulick and Jeff Miller with you. 72-62 the final score. Mount Union's offense went completely defunct in the uh, fourth quarter. The problem was they built themselves such a big lead that Mount Union was able to just kind of hang on there at the end. Well, it's like you heard Coach Hare say, when a team's shooting 82% in one quarter, build enough lead that they went hot and they went hot and cold. They were cold kind of quarter one, quarter four. Two and three, they just ran away with this game and just, yeah, like we said, put it on cruise control and said, hey, let's see if you guys can beat us. Well, after hitting nine of 11 shots in the second quarter and scoring 26 points, Mount Union hit eight of 19 in the third quarter and scored 25 more points. So 17 of 30 between those two quarters. And they followed it up with a one of eight shooting fourth quarter and only three of 10 from the free throw line. So they left the door open, but Baldwin Wallace just couldn't shoot it at the ridiculous clip Mount Union was. BW only hit five of 20 in that, uh, that fourth quarter. It was a valiant effort trying to come back, but just not enough tonight. 
And like you said, 5 of 20 in the glaring one for me, a team that shoots as very well they do from three-point line, 0 for 5 when they needed them. And a 5 of 9 from the line, like we were talking about in that game, when the clock stopped, you definitely got to hit those. Coach Herrer said that she would have preferred to see her team guard Abby Bartoshevitz a little better. And while it's hard to disagree with that, the other side of the coin is she was absolutely on fire tonight to a point where really you couldn't stop her. I mean, when she was shooting that purely, tip your cap and say, hey, somebody else's night. Yeah, I don't even think you could guard her. She was kind of more of a uh, video game-esque uh, out there tonight. NBA, NBA, K, whatever, you know, the MBK 20 or whatever we're at now on EA Sports and whatever. But she was, I mean, when she buried that one from the attack line on the volleyball court as time was expiring, it was her night and there was nothing, I mean, other than maybe voodoo dolls to make sure she couldn't shoot, <laughs> there was nothing you were going to stop her doing. 25 points for Abby Bartoshevitz led the way on 8 of 10 from beyond the perimeter. She also had five rebounds. Erin White basically did what she's done every game, 10 points, eight rebounds tonight. Those were her season averages. Jamie Sanborn, kind of a quiet night. She had four fouls along with Erin White. Sanborn finished with seven and five. She turned the ball over a couple of times. Anna Alkire played okay, three points, three rebounds, three assists, but she gave it away four times. 12 points off the bench for Rachel Tinky. I thought she made a nice impact for Mount Union as well. BW was paced by Sydney Clark's 19 points and eight rebounds, both team highs. Seven to 13 for Clark tonight. It's a conference season high for her, but second highest point total at any point this year and just three shy of her career high. The eight rebounds also a season high. 16 points for Mackenzie Colombo. She did it on, on a night that almost felt quiet for her. She ended up getting a couple of free throws late, but Colombo didn't look like she was quite as in control as usual. Six of 18 from the floor and a lot of forced shots from her. It looked like a lot of the attacking to the rim where she was looking to get contact, didn't get it. And then it just was one of those things, like I said, throughout the game, BW was looking for contact instead of going right to the hole and laying it in. Tough night for Clara Lemon. She finished with seven points and seven rebounds, but connected on only two of 10 shooting the basketball. Riley Schill hit two of six shots for six points. Rachel Wommeldorf, six points on three of six shooting. BW was out rebounded by nine, 41-32. They gave up a lot of points off turnovers. 21, in fact, uh, of Mount Union's points came off of BW's turnovers. BW also capitalized on some mount giveaways, but it, uh, it just didn't really click when BW needed it too late. And so the Yellow Jackets fall for the first time this season. They are now 11 and one on the year. Any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Great game. Watch the, let's see what happens on Saturday and next Wednesday. So we'll see how the Yellow Jackets take this loss, you know, first of the year, see if they can now bounce back, go down and play in a place that's not very fun to play in, 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 in Wilmington. And then when you have to come back and play who's still undefeated and 15th ranked in the country, we'll see what they ha happens for the Polar Bears on Saturday too. But see how they bounce back. It'd be really interesting to see this is the first time this team has seen a little adversity, and we'll see what they, how they bounce back. How they've been playing all year, I don't see it being a, th a losing streak. I think they're going to bounce right back and get back right on the winning track. Just a, a point of emphasis on that specifically. The, the Yellow Jackets in the 05-06 season started 9-0, lost two in a row, then ripped off 13 wins in a row. This uh, loss tonight, matched the 0304 Yellow Jacket team as the best start in uh, the last couple of decades of women's basketball. Still a tremendous season so far for BW, and it is uh, not even yet halfway over. We have just started the 2017 portion of the calendar year, and Baldwin Wallace has most of the OAC still in front of them. So the Jackets are 11-1, 4-1 in conference. Mount Union goes to 8-4 with the win. They are 3-2 in the OAC. Our next coverage of Yellow Jacket basketball will be on the men's side on Saturday when the uh, Wilmington Quakers come to town. We'll have coverage beginning 15 minutes before that one gets underway right here on BWYellowJackets.com. The next time the women return home, it will be a week from today when they host the 15th nationally ranked Ohio Northern Polar Bears. 
On behalf of Jeff Miller and the rest of us at Sports Information, I'm Brendan Gulick. So long from Ersprung Gymnasium. Mount Union beats Baldwin Wallace to snap their undefeated start to the year. Your final score. Have a great night, everybody.